Exodus 34, 14. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Do you understand? Christ is the bridegroom. The church is His bride. And the bridegroom is in love with His church. She is His woman. She's married. Promised to Him. So when others, the world, starts looking at the bride and wants to touch His bride and wants to molest His bride, I'll just say it. The world wants to molest the bride of Christ. Wants to infiltrate wants to defame her, wants to stain her, make her dirty. He gets jealous. He's a jealous God. He's not going to just lay down and let that happen. He's going to come with His wrath. He's going to bring judgment in the earth because of His love for His church. Deuteronomy 4.24 So see, that's why you've got to understand God's judgments are because of His love. It says, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. So well, that's great, but those are all Old Testament. They're all, you know, part of the law, and we're not under the law. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 through 4. And this is where I'm going to end. I had a whole other thing. We're not going to get there. It says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Paul speaking, writing to the church at Corinth. After all their mess, and their goofiness, and their immaturity, playing games, treating the gifts like toys instead of treasures. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I am espoused you. I have espoused you to, to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, see this lukewarm spirit, spirit of Antichrist, it's not an in your face. It crawls in slowly, carefully, deceit, deceitfully. It comes through the back door. It just weaves its way in, and you don't even realize. It's like floodwaters. They just creep in, and you don't realize they're even rising. You don't realize till it's already in there. It's too late. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Just like the serpent beguiled Eve. This thing has come into the church. I mean, this is in the first century church. How much more is this Antichrist spirit now in the church? Weaved its way in. Got its tentacles in there. Got its coils around the church. For if he that cometh, this is verse 4, we're going to end here. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. In other words, you better watch it because that's the spirit of Antichrist. There is another spirit. There is another gospel. There is another anointing. There's another Christ. It's the Antichrist. See, it's not, it's the opposite of Christ, but it's another Christ. It's so close to the real that even the elect would be deceived if not for the Lord. That's Matthew 24, 24. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. These false Christs. False prophets, another prophet, another Christ. It says they will even show great signs and wonders in Matthew 24, 24. So that tells me if they're going to work these false signs and wonders to deceive even the elect, well, that just tells me there's that makes the true signs and wonders even more real, even more needed, even more necessary. If there's a false, there's a there's a there's a real, there's a counter this is a counterfeit spirit. This Laodicean spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. It is a counterfeit Christ. It presents a counterfeit Christ. It gets people to worship idols and images and theories and theologies instead of God. It's a counterfeit spirit. 
It's a counterfeit anointing. It has an anointing that empowers men and women that are in that that comes under that system. They yield themselves to it. And there's an anointing. This is a false anointing. It's a demonic anointing that empowers them to do things. It's in the church today. It's been in the church for 2,000 years. It is a counterfeit movement that gets people to jump on its bandwagon. So when things get hard and the brooks dry up, the people depart to the next solical whim. They look for the next thing that's going to feel the same way that they felt in the beginning. It's a false feeling. It's not the true anointing. It's not the it's another presence. But when it doesn't feel like that, then they think that's not right. I got to get back under here what I'm used to. Cuz I got to be comfortable. I want to feel good. <laughs> I want to feel good. Well, I don't know, but the last time I checked, being crucified on your cross doesn't feel good. Denying yourself doesn't feel good. Selling all and following Him doesn't feel good to your flesh. The devil is not a creator. He's only a counterfeiter. He can only copy and imitate what God has already created. I was going to go, we won't go there, but the picture that these guys were painting all weekend is about the spirit and power of Elijah that's coming upon the church to deal with Ahab, Jezebel, this counterfeit spirit, this lackadaisical, Laodicean, lukewarm spirit. It's a mixture. You know, lukewarm is a mixture. Well, in Israel, they had a mixture in the days of Elijah. They had mixed with the, the surrounding people. God told them to keep their seed pure. But they went out and took wives from themselves, from these worldly tribes around them that were not, that were worshiping idols and other gods and, and the God of Baal, Balaam. They mixed with that. They brought it into the church. They even set up idols on Mount Carmel to worship, offer sacrifices, blood sacrifices to other gods. They were demons, demonic spirits, the devil, Baal himself. It's a false, a counterfeit. And it's in the church still today. We're worshiping these idols, these images. We've got these doctrines that are doctrines. The Bible calls them doctrines of devils. I mean, how much clearer can you be? So there's this confrontation on Mount Carmel between Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal and these other 450 prophets of the demonic. 850 of them stand against him. And you know the story. He's standing there under the, the true anointing of Jesus Christ. And He called all the people of Israel to come. Ahab and Jezebel has set up their dominion there. And all the people come to see the showdown. To see the, the true Christ take head on the counterfeit Christ. And you know what happens. He says, go ahead, take your time. Do all your incantations. Say all your, your witchcraft. Do all your little spells and say all your little prayers. You just go ahead. Call down your gods. See if they'll consume the sacrifice. All day long, nothing happened. So Elijah starts making fun of him. Huh, he must be asleep. He must be hard of hearing. Or maybe they're just busy all taking care of something else. You know. Then he has him pour the water, which is the washing of the water of the Word of God. He soaks everything with the water. Then He calls fire now. And it burns them all up. And then they take the sword of the Spirit and they slay all the demons, all the demonic prophets. That's where we're at. That's the Spirit that we're combating that we have got to start confronting even more so. And we don't hate the people. You love the people. But you can't let them stay. In this deception. And the only antidote for the lie is to tell the truth. So we have to preach the truth. The Word of God. The solution is to be on fire. To be hot for God. Amen? Not to be lethargic. 
Get on fire for Him. Serve Him with your whole heart, not half-heartedness. We're going to be a difference maker. Guess what? We're going to be confrontational. And even more so. Because as the days go on, they're going to get darker and darker. But as the church goes on, the real church, the true church, the bride church is going to get brighter and brighter. And light and darkness are going to clash. They're going to conflict. Guess what? We win. The fire comes down. We win. And our God is honored. Our God is worshipped. Our God will rule and reign forever.